Hi class, it's Sister Scanlon. I just wanted to go over our exam to review sheet. And so if you look on Canvas, you can see this January 20th to the 23rd exam two, and you can click on this to get the review sheet. So I just downloaded that and, and that's what we're gonna go over for this video. Um, so I put a lot of, um, I put a lot of uh, practice problems so that you can work out the the objectives as you go through this review sheet and so as you look at chapter five these are all the objectives and so high low is highly tested on the exam and just to um, just a comment about the exam there's about six conceptual questions and then the rest are are workout problems so I just say that just because it's a lot of numbers this exam and and not as much of the conceptual or like word questions it's just going to be a lot of calculations and knowing how to calculate the specific things that the exam will be asking for and so hopefully you can see this I know some of the other videos were small and private so hopefully this will be a little bit better so high low this cost equation y equals a plus bx and this was tested on your quiz but just make sure you know you know what y a and b and x all stand for so total cost equals fixed cost plus the variable cost per unit times the number of units and uh, the exam will ask you for different things you know what's the fixed cost what's the total cost um, if you plug in a different amount of units what will, what will be the total cost and and so we know that we can find the variable cost, the B, by doing this high-low calculation. So um, the cost for the high point minus the, so always do the cost on top and the activity on bottom. And activities normally in units um, or, um, yeah, well, normally the cost on top and then the activity, whatever you're doing. Um, and so the two data points, the cost for the high minus the cost for low, activity for the high point minus activity for the low point and solve for the fixed cost using um, cost per unit times high or low activity and so if you were to look at this example in the test review sheet so management believes this is a mixed expense and it depends on the number of escrows completed so you would look and and see which is the high point and which is the low point and so as I just look glance over here I think the high point is going to be May and the cost, so we always put the cost on top. So I see May is $9,201. And the low point seems to be November, which is $6,678. Nice, so 94 escrows or activities. And then the office expenses or the dollar amounts. So 94 and then there's 35 on the low. So we'll take the difference, the high minus the low, and divide that by the high minus the low in activity. And that'll give us our variable uh, cost per unit. And so we will plug that into our formula. And so our formula, we can use the high point or the low point. It doesn't really matter. So this is our total cost right here. And this is our, um, this is our right here. This is our number of units. So our total cost, let's do the high point, is 9,201. So that's our y. So remember our formula, y equals, y equals a plus bx, b and x. OK, so we don't know what our a is. a is a question mark. We're trying to find our fixed expense. And our b, we just solve for our variable cost, our $42.76. And our x will be our low point. So this is our high point, our total, and our x is this 94 to solve for our fixed costs. So if we times these two together, equals this one times this one, right? And then so y equals a plus bx. So we'll take this from the other side to solve for a, or to isolate a by itself. So that will be y minus um, the B. So I just moved this. I since this was a plus b x, um, and we already times the b x. We'll minus it and minus it. So I minus the four thousand zero nineteen from the nine thousand two hundred to get a equals five thousand one hundred and eighty one. So that'll be our uh, fixed expense. So our t our ending formula will be y equals five thousand one hundred eighty one and thirty one cents. 
plus uh, our, B, our B, which is $42.76, or 76 cents X. So that's the formula that we'll be looking for. And if they were to give you a specific um, units of activity, this X, you could just plug it in and solve for Y. So kind of a lot of algebra there. So the question is, using the high-low method, which um, esti the estimate of the variable component, so the variable component, what we first saw for, would be closest to $42.76. So you would know that. would be that The correct answer would be B on that one, using the high-low method. The um, estimate of the fixed component, so we had to solve for that fixed component, was $5,182. So just round it up a little bit. But you could, you could know that one. So if you move this, you can see our whole formula right here and how we calculated it, how I just barely did. And so this is just to help you practice. So you can see the questions and then remove the shape, this like rectangle thing, in order for you to understand, you know, what, um, to look at the answers and understand how it was calculated. Okay, moving on to 5.3. So now we've so we've gone over um, the high-low and the formula, and also how to calculate um, the whole formula out. And 5.3 talks about understanding the contribution format income statement. So it's introduced in chapter five, but it's really delved in dive into in chapter six. And so this is huge. So sales less the variable expenses equals contribution margin less fixed expense fixed expenses equals net operating income. So this seems really simple, um, but just remember that these variable expenses are not going to be like product and period costs as we learned in the previous chapters. These are going to be all variable expenses, which could include selling or administrative costs that are variable. And so when you're doing your problems, just make sure when they ask for contribution margin, well make sure they're asking for contribution margin, they could ask for gross margin which is sales minus cost of goods sold. But when they ask for contribution margin, just remember that it'll be sales minus your sort of cost of goods sold that's variable, and also uh, you're selling at administrative costs that are variable. And sometimes they're like, oh, 3% of sales, or, or you know, 12% of sales, and so you would just um, calculate that variable expense and then find your contribution margin. And uh, the follow so this is an example of how of a question that you could see, or a similar question you could see. So the following information has been provided um, the first quarter of the year. And so as you see, this is asking for gross margin. So that's what we learned in the previous chapter. So that would be sales minus cost of goods sold. So sales minus cost of goods sold. We're only looking at the period costs and not these variable selling. We don't include selling or administrative when we're looking for the gross margin. So we would just do, let's see, sales minus cost of goods sold equals our gross margin, right? And then for our contribution margin format, we do sales minus variable expenses equals our contribution margin contribution margin. Okay, so this one said the sales were 350,000 less our cost of goods sold is 1 in 60,000 equals our gross margin. So 190,000 is what I got for the gross margin. Hopefully you got something similar. Yep, pretty straightforward. 190,000. So the correct answer over here is D. The contribution margin uh, for the first quarter. So we know it's going to be the same sales and then I guess they're assuming that all the cost of goods sold is variable so we'll just make that assumption that all of this is variable this 160 is variable but we also need to include oh sorry this is down here sales minus all our variable expenses there's more variable expenses than just the cost of goods sold we're just assuming that it's all variable. So the variable selling expense is 35000 and the variable administrative expenses is 15000 So we'll add another 35000 and 15000 And I need to wrap up this video. So we'll just do this, and this will be our last problem. Minus the next, minus all the expenses. Minus this one and this one. So I got 140000 on that one. So the answer would be B. I don't know if that, no, nope, that one doesn't show you it. But I got the answer B for our contribution margin. And then we'll move on to chapter six in the next video.